Hello everybody, welcome to part two of our breast MRI series. This will be addressing the artifacts. Our first video covered um, how you have to position a patient for optimal image acquisition and then also instructions for image acquisition from the technologist perspective. And I just want to briefly review what artifacts you can encounter. For MRI of the breast, which is a high sensitivity test with a good specificity, we have a plethora of indications that need the best image quality, in particular um, staging, providing the surgical roadmap, screening, finding very small lesions, so we need to have the best image quality. We routinely perform breast imaging at 1.5 and 3 Tesla, preferentially in my case a 3 Tesla because uh, it improves the signal up to a factor of 2. A very important part of breast imaging, and this coil we have shown in our, our first part video is a 16-channel coil, so we preferentially use 16-channel um, coils. It must be a dedicated breast coil, and the coil architecture can improve the signal up to a factor of 5. So you can perform, um, the minimum coil requirement is like 8 channels, preferentially more, up to 16. It's technically demanding, it requires excellent fat saturation, and we are also using nowadays high spatial and temporal resolution protocols and functional imaging. And so and along the way of all these requirements, we have factors that influence our image quality, which be patient, technical, which can confound image quality and in particular interpretation. So we, that's why this is, video is here to highlight what are the potential artifacts we can encounter and what we need, can we do to mitigate. A huge factor has already been covered uh, in the first part of the video, the patient positioning and image acquisition to some extent, and I will touch upon the what it happens if we do not have optimal imaging. Patient positioning has been fully covered in the first video. There's nothing I can add to that. That was a perfect explanation. Um, what happens if it is not done as, uh, as, as optimally? You have areas of high signal intensity resulting when breast tissue is adjacent to coil elements, like in this case, we want to avoid that because that impedes my interpretation in those areas. The tissue can be excluded from um, the coil and might be folded, um, compressed, resulting in loss of symmetry, which can also impede your interpretation, in particular when it's outside of the coil. Sometimes there's nothing you can actually do about it. When the patient is, uh, is large-breasted, you will have the so-called SpongeBob SquarePants artifact when the coil is not able to ac accommodate the full volume. That is nothing you can really do about it. This just happens. Things that you can sort of, to some extent, influence with how we already have shown with optimal patient instruction to highlight that lying still is the most important thing and her only part in this exam, so some, um, her active participation, but there still will be motion. It may affect the entire study or only a few images and is usually typically seen as ghosting where you have a faint copy of the anat anatomy in the image. Be aware that this can happen. And also, usually our technologists put in the notes when there was significant patient motion and despite best instructions, the patient kept on moving. Sometimes you will even abort the exam because it will not be diagnostic. Um, the ghosting um, propagates uh, in the face encoding direction regardless of the direction and kind of motion. Um, some motion that is very difficult to correct for is the physical motion coming from fluid um, in, in the breast it's typically from the heart pulsation artifacts from the heart. Um, it can be uh, a saturation bands can be used to decrease or eliminate ghosting when placed over a moving structure such as the heart, or the face encoding direction can be adjusted in breast to right left to have the artifact not run to through your region of interest. So these are ways to mitigate the motion that can happen, but still. It, um, even minimal motion can will cause misregistration and particularly be evident in the subtraction artifact and um, that might be limit usefulness. So you have to be aware of that. And again, patient instruction is usually the best and tell them this is what will give you the best exam if you lie still. And this is an example where we have patient motion. The subtraction images was not optimal, but we have the source image in the sense the fat select uh, suppressed image where we see the lesion and then can go back to the subtraction. But still, this was a small, tiny lesion that was a fibroadenoma that um, in that case we saw then on ultrasound. 
Other cases where this is a more of a problem is it is this case here. Subtraction is horrible. You really can't say much about that here. You can give it a try with motion subtraction software. Software that's not very often that helpful, but it can. And in this case, it actually showed us the small cancer. This was a small invasive breast cancer, which we found could identify confidently on MRI after motion correction. But be aware there are some cases where it is just impossible. The patient has moved too much uh, and we, the subtraction images will not be good. Then go to the fat suppressed source images and try to give your best diagnosis of that and acknowledge in your report that there was motion limiting evaluation. Other artifacts you encounter, um, which you cannot, uh, which you will see and uh, are metal artifacts. Yeah? The patients often have uh, metal in their breast yeah, can be small, can be large, um, and which will distort your, your images. And it's more evident on gradient echo image due to the absence of the 180 degree refocusing pulse and, and, and magnetic susceptibility is higher at higher field strength. So this would be a fact where we had a huge metal artifact in the breast, um, which the patients didn't let us know that there's actually metal in the breast. What was that? Well, she had a wire localization and a surgery and parts of the wires stayed in the breast, which we could then appreciate on MRI imaging. And we just have to acknowledge that we cannot say anything about the area that is around this huge metal artifact. So this is like a diagnostic impeder. One thing, which is, this is a case, I just did a one off there. In this case, a biopsy needle broke. The patient actually had that then surgically removed with this metal retained in the breast. Other things that you will see, which are less of a diagnostic problem, is because it's closer to the chest wall, but you still have to mention that uh, loop recorders, cardiac um, loop recorders can undergo MRI uh, exams, and also cardiac pacemakers are um, MRI um, conditional at 1.5 Tesla, so you will see that. Unexpected artifacts like this one's here, this is an implant where the surgeon had actually his autograph, a metal plate with his initials in there. This, these are artifacts you will encounter. In this case, they are not a diagnostic problem because that was not an implant exam. Where you can use the metal artifact is when uh, you want to visualize the susceptibility artifact to see if biopsies was appropriate. Here you see the enhancing lesions and on the T1 non-fat set image, best seen the susceptibility artifact, which will uh, allow you to correlate. Other things that you can have um, are that gives you artifacts um, other than metal are BBs, which are pellets that you put on the skin to highlight a palpable area of concern. And in this case has a huge artifact. I mean, when you see that patient out and BB off, you know now where the area is anyway, and please visualize without the BB. Technical artifacts um, are related to coil, RF interference and coverage, chemical shift and fat saturation. One sort of no-brainer is make sure that the breast coil is plugged in. If you use the body coil, it will give you a grainy image due to lower SNR. This would be an example with breast coil and with body coil. One thing, RF interference, is when you have those zipper artifacts running across the image, that means um, there is someday a damage to the Faraday cage. Usually it's the open door or the lamp left in the magnet, which from the above, which you used in the biopsy, which is too close to the magnet. This can usually be easily addressed, but you have to check when you see those zipper artifacts. Anatomic coverage is very important. An oversized field of view increases pixel size and includes extraneous organs in the examination that you do not necessarily need. We want to just cover the area of interest. When your field of view is too small, you have a reduced signal, inadequate coverage, and most often wraparound al aliasing artifacts. So this, as you can see here, wrapping in the arm, the anatomy, but depending on call, you will have the arms up or the ups, arms down. Um, so make sure that you do not have that, um, that, that can impede your, your diagnosis. So um, this is one of the artifacts I think you most often will see when the field of view is too small, but the technologists usually spot that immediately and then adjust the field of view to do to not have such wraparound artifacts. This is here with wraparound. Around. This is here without. I actually asked my technologist to produce those images for you. So that's what not what we routinely do. This is the ideal images you want to see. Artifacts that are sort of more historical are zebra stripes, which are most notably on gradient eco sequences and occur if the body call is used, which we should not do. Um, chemical shift artifacts. 
Fat suppression largely eliminates that artifact, and since all of our protocols are now with selective fat suppression, this is rather a, also a historical artifact. But if you are doing not fat suppressed images, you should be aware this can exist. The most important thing that actually can happen is inadequate fat suppression. The MRI software automatically identifies the water peak as the highest signal, but if the fat is predominant in the breast, it can happen that the wrong peak is identified. So then you will have inadequate fat suppression, but the technologists will easily identify that and can correct for that with a manually selecting the peak. So this is, uh, this is what you can do to mitigate those artifacts. And this is often very pronounced if you have also a breast where there is an implant and the other one is a, a normal glandular breast. So, but this is um, what your technologist will spot and will adjust for you. And I think Olga has also addressed that appropriately in her video. Inhomogeneous fat suppression is a common problem, but can be improved by shimming the magnet. Um, so uh, current in-shim coils adjusted to optimize B0 field uniformity within the volume, improve uniformity of the fat saturation. And this would be here an example where you can actually do that to improve your um, fat saturation. And alternative methods is using Dixon fat saturation, which we actually currently use in our protocol. So before I conclude, uh, there are just like two more artifacts that you can see which are kind of new with the high spatial temporal resolution protocols is the nipple born burnout. The patient definitely has a nipple, but on those images it's gone. This is another case where you have a nipple burnout and this predominantly happens in patients with prominent nipples. It's the B0 field is very inhomogeneous about the area of the nipple, and it's challenging to unwrap rapidly into changing face in that area. So that can lose, lose you the nipple down the way. So slow acceleration, um, SNR increases, and that increases the probability that this can be unwrapped um, properly. But you know the patient has a nipple. Um, another pitfall is for the technologists to watch out the dark heart sign. That just means you do not have contrast in your image. This is like um, the patient, no contrast in there. This is the image without um, contrast. That means you should have a problem with a contrast injection. This should, that it's necessary that actually technology spots that along the way and not you when you're reading the exam because the patient is gone and you will have to recall. So in conclusion, both patient and technical factors lead to unwanted artifacts in breast MRI, and um, the use of properly functioning high field strength MRI imaging systems and optimal imaging protocols are pivotal for avoiding those artifacts. A well-trained technologist um, is, I think, uh, the main, one of the most important keys to getting best breast imaging, and we work together to provide our patients with that. And with that, I want to conclude. Thank you very much.